Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Davette, Suave, and Shampoo Plus A. Now, let's all play What's My Line? <laughs> Let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you. And to my left, a gentleman, a witty fellow who has certainly found out that two heads are better than one. Uh, that's me, that's me, and I'm here again, <laughs> oh, my dear. Oh, Jerry. <laughs> I want to tell you, you look so marvelous in this new formal. Oh, thank you. You know, the reason I'm wearing a tuxedo is because I... 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 Well, I, 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 I mean, uh, but the last time I was here, I was wearing the sweater, and this... Uh, oh, please, Arlene, I'm only human. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you be quiet now until we play the game, will you? Just, uh -huh. just hold beautiful thoughts. All right. All right, all right dear. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's Paul Winchell and Jerry Mahoney, <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for that very friendly introduction. I'm, uh, I'm really getting to feel that uh, I'm one of the family. Oh, isn't that adorable? <laughs> You're one of the family, kiss me. Oh, come on now, stop. <laughs> oh, well, I have a little arrangement with Jerry. Uh, he introduces Dorothy Kilgallen, and then he retires for a while. Uh, retires, plunk in the trunk. That's where I retire. <laughs> All right, will you introduce? Certainly. <clears throat> on my left is a phony ventriculist. No, no, come on, come on. Oh, and on his left is my favorite redhead and yours, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you. And on my left is a very clever and amusing fellow who a week from tomorrow night will open his summer tour in Binghamton, New York, with his own review, What's the Rush? Mr. Robert Q. Lewis. <laughs> Thank you. To my left, America's favorite conferencier, your host, Mr. John Charles Daly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, we have some very interesting occupations, all attached to some nice people. And with this combination, we expect to give the panel some trouble. In fact, I'll start giving the panel trouble right now. Please put on the blindfolds oh, right away, no. quickly. Oh. I know it's hot, but still. We'll have uh, also a mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show. We'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Camera, action. Oh, my darling, when I touch your hair, it is like, like straw, bamboo, dried macaroni. Cut, cut, cut. Now, Pierre, please, the sun is hot and dry. It's summer. What can the poor girl do? Oh, tell him somebody. Get suave, you suave. Condition with suave. Your hair will be lovely with suave. Don't let summer sun dull your hair. Make it dry, brittle, hard to keep in place. Use suave hairdressing. Suave protects against dryness, corrects dryness, instantly restores life, luster, manageability. And there's never the slightest oily look or feel, for suave and only suave contains greaseless lanolin. This summer, keep your hair beautifully in place, glowing, caressable, with light, fragrant Helene Curtis suave, liquid or cream. All right, panel, the blindfold's all in place? Yes. yes. Good, we'll meet our first challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Join me here. As you know, panel, we put your blindfolds on because there's an area of identification here, either in the name, which has been written on the board, either in costuming or perhaps appearance. There's some facet of our guests' physical makeup or physical actions upon the stage that would suggest too much to you, so you have been blindfolded. Will you know, sir, how we score this operation? Yes. All right. In that event, let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. Our first 
challenger is self-employed. With that, let's put Robert Q. Lewis to work. Uh, do you render a service, sir? Yes. Uh, this must be some kind of service that would make you well known to many people. Is that possible? Yes. Is it a service uh, that might have anything at all to do with the entertainment world? Yes. Uh, would I recognize, might I easily recognize your face? Yes. Would I be safe in assuming that you are not an entertainer per se? By that I mean singer, dancer, comedian. No. I think no is the proper answer there. Our guest has an identification with the public so broad in this area that we would have to accept that there is a substantial reputation as an entertainer, although this does not exclude reputations in other fields. Miss Francis. Well, then you are a singer, dancer, or an entertainer, right? One of those? Yes. <clears throat> are you known for one of those uh, more than another? Yes. <coughs> Well, that kills the singing bit. <laughs> Are you a dancer or some other kind of performer? Yes. Do you like it? <laughs> Are you, uh, do you appear on the stage? You mean explicitly here, the Broadway stage, or the present house? No, I mean, has our guest appeared on a stage, in a musical, or in a nightclub act, or some such? Not lately? We'll have a small conference. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yes? Well, are you perhaps better known for something other than performing? Yes. Are you a producer of some kind? Yes. Are you a producer in the picture business? No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Winchell. Uh, are you a producer in television? It's very quiet. <laughs> he hasn't no, produced television. lately. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Well, uh, that's a good question. That's almost as good as one of her weenies. Uh, have you produced a show lately? A recent production? Yes. Hmm. Uh, do you produce a program that is on steady? Once a week or... <laughs> What's happened over there? The network hasn't told him. <laughs> yes. You do produce a show on television. Is it a weekly show? Yes. Is this particular show uh, in the category of a variety show? <laughs> All righty. I would think in the broad classification, wouldn't you, sir? It's got broads in it. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis. <laughs> well, by that, I, by that I would mean, uh, is it more or less a combination of uh, singing, dancing, music, rather than a situation comedy or a quiz type of program? Yes. Uh, is this particular program on this network there's a yes. poignant question. Did he say yes? It is. Yes. yes. Would they bring him in from another network? Hardly ever. <laughs> uh, well, I'll just take a, a wild guess. Is this program on, uh, on Sunday night? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. That was some wild guess. Bye. <laughs> is this program enjoyed by children? Yes. Uh, would you say it was aimed more at children than at adults? No. 
Four down and six to go, Mr. Lewis. Uh, is it a dramatic program? Oh, for heaven's sake. I yeah. think. No. It's five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Do you say that you are a dancer and yet you produce a program? Does your program have something to do with dancing? Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, is your oh, lovely yeah. wife Lady Murray on the program? Are you Arthur Murray? That's yeah. right. Yeah. Co-producer with Mrs. Murray of a weekly program Catherine on Catherine Murray, yes. Yes, indeed. That gave you a lot more trouble than I thought it was going to do, mm -hmm. actually. And congratulations to you, Mr. Murray. I think you've got some thoroughly... Consumed. And do a step for us. Do, would you do a step <laughs> as you go and say hello to the panel? It'd be nice. I'm sure they'd like to say hello to you, sir. Shall we cha-cha? Yes. Cha-cha <laughs> on <right>. over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice start, panel. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Right there. Jenny? Writer. Jenny Writer, right? Uh, Miss, Mrs. Mrs. Writer, Mrs. Writer, would you look at the panel? That thought bear up with me. Now, you just come with me. They're formidable, I know, but actually they're all pretty nice people, and uh, you? we'll just chop them up a little bit, not let them chop us up at all. Do you know how we keep the score here, Mrs. Writer? Oh, yes, sir. Fine, then let's let the folks at home and our friends here know exactly what your line is. Panel, Mrs. Reiter is self-employed, and let's begin the questioning with Paul Winchell. Uh, well, Mrs. Reiter, uh, uh, could there be a product involved in what you do? Yes, sir. Uh huh. Uh, would this be possibly a product that I could use? I think so. Hey, Winch, do you like to use it too? Never mind. <laughs> well, would this particular product make me happy? In my opinion, it would. <laughs> It would make me happy. I think so. Well, uh, would, it, uh, would it change me in some way? Perhaps. <laughs> you mean change your physical appearance, Mr. Winchell? Well, I'd rather not pinpoint it that articulately because I might get a no. I would say this, that you raised the point of whether it would uh, create a condition of happiness to the degree that a sense of well-being would change you. We would agree that uh, you'd You're be You're going changed. to start with me again, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll accept that. Well, what I mean is this. Uh, uh, would it, would it be an improvement? <laughs> this change, would it be an improvement? Well, here again, we go back to the basic term of reference. If you would be changed in any degree by being made happy, then we would consider this would be an improvement, yes. I think he means that any change would be an improvement. You oh, said it, never mind. <laughs> well, all right, maybe I can uh, try to narrow down the product. Uh, would this particular product be found uh, more exclusively in one type of store than in another? Well, sometimes in a different store, sometimes yet in another other store. She's very kind. She's giving me yes, a yes indeed. on the Indeed. You've got a good one that time, and I'll just let it sit there, yes, too. I did. Well, uh, the size of this product, uh, could I possibly hold it in one hand? Sometimes. And sometimes I couldn't. Sometimes you couldn't. Well, is this product made of fabric? Fabric? Yes. Yeah. I don't like that look on his face already. Uh, Mrs. Ryder, no, don't sir. pay attention to him. Say yes. <laughs> no, Mrs. Sir. Ryder is giving you the no. delayed one on that. That's I one. Want... No, that's one down to nine to go, right. Miss Gilgallis. Is this product found in the usual well-regulated home? Well, I think so. Certainly a great many, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is it anything that's consumed? It is. Could it be taken internally? You mean inside the house? <laughs> <laughs> no, John, dear. Inside the person. 
Yes, you can take it internally. Uh -huh. Do people take this uh, as opposed to animals? Well, of course people take it. <laughs> well, you know what it is. I don't, Mrs. Ryder. Uh, is it ever liquid? Yes, ma'am. Is it sold in a bottle? Sometimes. By that you mean you're misleading me, or it can also be sold in some other type of container? I didn't hear that. No, the answer is sometimes properly given. Uh -huh. uh, could it be found in a can? Sometimes. Uh, is it better when it's cold than when it's warm? <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> uh, well, would you ever have it at a picnic? Sometimes. Does it have foam on it when you I pour it? I beg your pardon, I didn't catch. Does, does it have foam on it? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been standing too long, darling. <laughs> well, is it beer? Yes. Do you have something to do with beer? Do you make beer or sell beer? Well, it has something to do with beer, yes. Well, I have to find out what you... It, yes. You are self-employed? Yes. Well, then, uh, do you make beer? I should say not. No. Oh, <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Mr. Lewis. Well, Joe, uh, you sell beer in one way or another. Sell beer in one way or another, yes, but it's something else. Do you else. wholesale beer? Sometimes wholesale, sometimes something else. I would say Do you actually, have any with you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say actually that when you say, does Mrs. Ryder sell beer, basically you've got it. There's another aspect of it that is interesting. A tavern? Is she a barmaid? Is it domestic no. beer? No. Go on, now what happens if it's not... The well, then she would have to uh, uh, import it. Import it, is right. <laughs> two, was it two Borg would be two Danish? Two Borg, the world famous Danish, Danish. beer. Danish, so it's it. imported. We haven't got any part of De Denmark and here that I know of. And we also have the Augustina Brow, the is world that Danish famous. Danish too? Oh, no, that's German, from that's Munich. That's German, from Munich. See, there you are. And you gave them a rough time, and thank you oh, very much, Mr. Wright. Nice you. to have you with us. And what's your <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here's a word from Stop It. If you've got your own waterfall, maybe we're not talking to you. But how long since you've had a clean, clean feeling like this? You can with New Stopette. And nothing is safer than New Stopette. In it is an element that's actually used to purify the water you drink. And this ingredient is so effective that one tiny ounce will kill bacteria in 5,000 gallons of water. Choose from regular Stopette spray or the Mr. Stopette for men. Or get Stopette protection in this brand new stick form. Choose anyone and poof. There goes perspiration. How carefree can you get? Get news, stop at. Six years ago, Stop At first signed in on What's My Line and brought you the very first spray deodorant. Millions of you tried Stop At for its convenience alone and discovered the best protection ever against odor and perspiration. But today's new stop ad is actually more effective than ever before. Whatever deodorant, whatever form of deodorant you've tried, you've never felt so clean as you will with new stop ad. Yes, there's no substitute for the clean, clean feeling you get every day from stop ad. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my colleagues once again have been blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, no, I don't have my blindfold. Hey, Jerry, what are you doing up here? Jerry, I'll get back the... down under that there no, desk No, I'm going to take a look and tell them who it is. <laughs> don't you Jerry. dare. You get down there. It might be Edgar Bergen again. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, our mystery challenger, come in and sign in, please.
panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin it with Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you a beautiful and glamorous actress? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> what on a night to go, Mr. Lewis? <laughs> 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 Oh, no, you're not, are you? Uh, no. Are you a beautiful and glamorous man? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> are you in... Uh, may I ask yes, a real question? Are you in the entertainment world? Uh, yeah, I've been in the entertainment world a long time. Miss Francis? <laughs> <laughs> are you a performer uh, in pictures? Oh, a little bit, a little bit. Mr. Winchell? A little bit. Well, I, are you primarily known for... No, I guess a little bit. Well, then are you uh, uh, primarily known for your work uh, on television? Sure enough, honey. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know who it is. It's Senior Wences. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think so. No, no. No, it wouldn't be primarily known for work in television no. because there's another area in which our guest is also very active. That's $2.08 to go, Miss Kilgallen. I knew they were whistling at something. Uh, does one of you sing? Uh, I think so, a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> Mr. Lewis? Uh, are you, uh, is the singer here with his wife? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Do you but perform together? I mean, in, in your appearances? Uh, no, honey. Three dollars <laughs> seven to go, Mr. Winchell. Well, I got Marlon Brando so far, but I don't have the girl. <laughs> hmm. Uh, do you have a steady weekly show? Ah, uh, no, no. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Has one of you ever played the Copacabana? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Lewis? Did uh, one of you... Did I have the pleasure of working with one of you at a local New York station many years ago? Hmm. When I you were first starting and were very, very young. Very, very young, yeah. Very, very young. <laughs> Miss Francis? Uh, is your wife in a different field from what you are in? Sure and half, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Well, is uh, uh, the gentleman, is your work uh, basically, are you well known as a singer? Ah, the fate so, the fate so. Miss Kilgallen? And the lady, is she well known as Pierre Angeli? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> I think that does it. Pick them up. Mr. and Mrs. Vic Damona, I have a suspicion, Vic, that this is by way of a birthday celebration, because if memory strikes me properly, your birthday was last week, that's and right, I Wednesday. think Mrs. Damona's is coming up in another day or two, isn't that's, it? That's yes. right. Is that why you're and here I in New think, York? Well, well, I came over here because my husband is starting his uh, television show. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, July also, oh, I'm second. sorry, I think <laughs> July 2nd? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over CBS. And uh, she's also here for a... Uh, uh, in the uh, Metro Center here t for the new MGM picture. Somebody up there likes me. This is the life story of uh, Rocky Graziano, of course. Oh, yes. And uh, show enough, honey, show enough. Southern Italian. I think you did a wonderful uh, job, yeah. and I appreciate it very good. I appreciate it very much. Very, very <laughs> well, very I must say it's Thank wonderful to have had you both, and happy birthday a little bit late and Thank a little you. bit previously. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. time left, a little more, about three minutes. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please, sir? Wilbert? Baumgartner, right, sir? Oh. Uh, where are you from, Mr. Baumgartner? 
Hubbard, Ohio. Hubbard, Ohio. Look at the panel. Panel, look at Mr. Baumgartner. Mr. Baumgartner, come with me. You know how we score this operation? Yes, I do. Fine. Let's let people at home and those with us here know exactly what your line is. Two minutes to see what you can do with Mr. Baumgartner. He's salaried. Let's begin with Arlene Francis. I noticed Mr. Baumgartner, when the camera came on him, gave a sly wink to the audience. That was very sweet, Mr. Baumgartner. I take it you're happy in your job, are you? Thank you. I am very happy. You work for a profit-making organization? No, I don't. That's and you're fine. happy anyway. <laughs> I like that. One down and nine to go, Mr. Winchell. Uh, well, do you work for the government? Which? Uh, yes, yeah. I do. Which government? Well, I thought you wanted to be more specific, but that... Oh, I see. Well, all right. Uh, the uh, federal government? No. That's two down and eight well, to I go, was Ms. specific. Uh, State of Ohio? State of Ohio. Oh. Do you have anything to do with the... Uh... Is your question, Bar does he work for the State of Ohio government? Is that your question? Yes. He said yes. No, I, thought, I think he misunderstood you. I, thought, I think he thought you were asking if he was from the State of Ohio. The oh, question is, do you pardon. work for the State of Ohio? No. No. Oh. That would make it uh, three down and seven to go, Mr. Lewis. You are from Hubbard, Ohio, and you work for some government. Do you then possibly work for the city of Hubbard? No. That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Well, never mind any of that, then. How about uh, <laughs> law? Do you have anything to do with the lawful side of the government? No. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Winchell. Uh, is there uh, any product involved in this service which you perform? Yes. In a sense, yes. There's a product necessary to the functioning of the service. Oh, well, is it necessary that I determine the product necessary to the helpful, functioning it, of the service? It would be helpful if you want to be functional about the general functioning of the line of questions. Well, let's be functional. That's all. Oh, all righty. All right. Uh, actually, this... I'm afraid, Paul, that we've run out of time. Oh. It's too bad. It's a very tough one. I don't think he'd uh. feel too badly. But I would say right off the bat, though, to settle Dorothy's questions, that he works for the county that he lives in uh -huh. in Ohio. It's county government, not state. And he is inspector of beehives. See that the beehives stay healthy. Thank you, Mr. Dolgar. We've got the whole business story. Well, now, and he says bees won't bite you if they're feeling good. Before our panel says good night, here's a word from our alternate spot. All set for vacation? You got your Remington Auto Home Shaver? Ah, sure. Now you can take that perfect shave with you wherever you go. It's the world's only two-in-one shaver, the Remington Auto Home Electric Shaver. Plug it into your car's cigarette lighter and shave wherever you go. Or use it at home every morning. It works on both home and car voltage to give cleaner, more comfortable shaves. It's the wonderful Remington Auto Home Electric Shaver. And not only that, if a bee's got a full stomach, he won't bite you. And so until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night, John. Good night, Jerry, dear, and good night, Paul. Nice to have had you. Good night. Thank you. And nice being under the desk. You got to run in your stocking, you know. That. I yeah. have. <laughs> good night, Dorothy. <laughs> good night, Bob. Good luck on the tour. Thank you, Dorothy. Good night, John. You have a run in your sock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and some good news. Our old friend and colleague, Bennett Surf, will be back with us next week. He's been in Europe all these many weeks, as I think you've known. And to you, thanks very much for being with us tonight on What My Life. <laughs> Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Tottman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Be sure to see the other Helene Curtis television programs, Seizes Hour, and Dollar a Second.